My brothers and sisters, I'm sure we are aware that we are within the 10 best days of the Islamic year. And I'm sure we've come across the hadith or we've heard it, the hadith of Ibn Abbas in radiallahu anhuma, wherein he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنَّ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْعَشْرِ there are no days of the year wherein good deeds are more loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than those that are done within these 10 days. Referring to the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah, we are well within these 10 days. But I want to draw your attention to a few very important factors. When we think to ourselves, that Allah loves good deeds during these days more than He does throughout the year, what's the first thing that comes to our minds? I'm sure almost all of us, myself included, we start thinking of doing extra deeds and we start thinking perhaps I can read a Quran, perhaps I can do some nafil and sunnah, perhaps I can be charitable, perhaps I can you know, do something that is voluntary, etc., not realizing that that is not where you start. That is never a starting point. And this is something that we need to clarify because many times shaitan makes us think about th that which is voluntary when we have not yet considered that which was obligatory and farad. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that the most loved deeds the deeds that I love the most from any one of my worshippers are those deeds that I have made compulsory and farad upon them. Which means your farad salah. It means your zakah. It means your fasting in the month of Ramadan, that which is farad. It means also that we should be abstaining from that which is haram, that which is sinful. Because what is the point, really, of a person who engages in lots of voluntary deeds, but they are perpetrating adultery, they are deceiving and cheating people, they are consuming usury and interest, they are perhaps gambling and on drugs and so on. We need to make a greater effort to become from among those who can quit this. So if you, during these days, decide that I have quit, this bad habit that I have had for so long, wallahi, it is better for you than engaging in extra voluntary deeds while you have wiped them out by perpetrating sins that are major. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to abstain from major sin. So when you hear that Allah loves good deeds the most, the first thing that should come to your mind is farad, that which is compulsory. Do I get up for Fajr? Let me get up early. Let me take a little bit more time in the way I fulfill my Salah. If my Fajr is five minutes every morning, let's make it 10 because this is a good deed. It's the deed that Allah loves the most and I'm in these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah and I would like to improve myself as a person. So let me start increasing in terms of the quality of the good deed. Sometimes we end up missing Farad. We miss our Farad. And then we sit with a Sunnah uh, salah and we fulfill without having made qada. Qada meaning that which is uh, fulfilling your lost salah, that which you missed for some reason, you now need to make it up. It's called qada. So it's more important to do qada than it is to do the sunnah or that which is voluntary. My brothers and sisters, this is a very interesting point. When we would like to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing we should do, we ask ourselves two questions. If you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask yourself two questions. The first question is, have I fulfilled my obligations unto Allah? Allah asked me to do certain things. Allah has requested from me certain things. Have I fulfilled these things? It's very interesting. Allah asked you to fulfill your salah. Allah asked you to do so many things. We know what the duties are. Allah asked you to dress in a specific way. Allah asked you to speak in a specific way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required from you um, that you eat in a specific type of food, etc. Have I fulfilled the obligation unto Allah? Obligation, that which is farad. The second question is, have I stayed away from that which will anger Allah? Those are the two questions. If you can answer those questions with the correct responses, you are heading in the right direction. Now, shaitan will come to us. What does he tamper with? 
Shaitan usually tempers with one of these two things. Either he makes you leave your farad or he makes you engage in sin. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us one of the greatest acts of worship. Do you know what it is? He taught it to Adam alayhi salam. A very great act of worship. After a sin was committed and Adam alayhi salam ate that which he was not supposed to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him some words. Allah gave him a few words, taught him these words. What were these words? رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا وَإِن لَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh our Rabb, oh Allah. Now Allah is teaching Adam alayhi salam to say this. So we need to say this too. We say, oh our Rabb, Rabbana. ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا We have wronged ourselves. What we did just now was very wrong. It was oppressing ourselves. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy upon us, we are going to lose. So Allah taught Adam alayhi salam those words. Adam alayhi salam said those words genuinely, and he was forgiven. And Allah made tawbah one of the biggest acts of worship. So much so that the hadith says, tawbah wipes out whatever sins you've made in the past. You know, when a person is not a Muslim, they've done whatever they may have done in their past life. They revert to Islam as they enter the fold of Islam and declare what we know as the shahada, bearing witness that there is only one deity worthy of worship, who is Allah. And bearing witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger of Allah. Once they declare that shahada, guess what happens to them? All their bad deeds are wiped out. All their bad deeds are wiped out. It is selected formatting. It's not that everything's wiped out. All your bad deeds are wiped out. That's what happens when you engage in tawbah for those who are already believers. Because sometimes a person might feel you know, when you don't really know or you don't have deep knowledge, you might think, look, you know, people who enter Islam, they're forgiven totally, right? What if I exit it and enter it again? I'm formatting my hard drive, right? That is foolish thinking, subhanallah. We are not allowed to think that way. Allah does you a favor. Allah says, we will give you that as a gift if you just ask Allah's forgiveness. Subhanallah, that person was not a believer. They accepted Islam. You are a believer. You just have to say, oh Allah, forgive me. That is such a great act of worship. I call upon yourselves and myself during these 10 days to engage in that which is most beloved to Allah and that is seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring the remembrance and the greatness of Allah. وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ The Quran says, encouraging us to remember the name of Allah during specific days. Go to the tafsir and you will find that some of the mufassireen have said that these specific days are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. We are in them right now. So remember Allah often. We all know that we should increase takbir. Don't wait for the day that the takbir commences in the masjid after the farad salah. Don't wait for that day. Yes, when that day comes, you will participate in that takbir that is read after farad salah. But throughout these 10 days, we are supposed to be repeating that takbir and various other takbirat. What is that takbir? Takbir means the declaration of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it goes as follows. The sunnah wording. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Subhanallah, amazing words. There are two different ways of saying it. You can have three takbirs right at the beginning. So you could also say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Either you say it twice or thrice right at the beginning. You're declaring the greatness of Allah. You are saying there is none worthy of worship besides Allah and he is the greatest and all praise belongs to Allah. So Allah says, say that, subhanallah. Do we say it? Another very interesting aspect is when you remember Allah within yourself, like say my mouth is closed, I haven't moved my lips, in my mind I'm thinking of Allah. It's an act of worship. And the hadith says, Man dhakarani fi nafsihi dhakartuhu fi nafsi. Whoever remembers me, Within himself, I remember him within myself. How? Allah knows best. But Allah says, you know, people do remember Allah within themselves. It's an interesting act of worship, very important. But 
I can teach you a greater act of worship to make an effort to move your tongue, to move your lips, to use a bit of your voice. Why? It's a very big act of worship, far greater than thinking only. Start saying it.